watching The High Road with me, Keith Warren. Brought to you by Timber Creek Outdoors. The weather is beautiful in Canada, and the whitetails are too. The bucks are still grouped up together, and most of the antlers are still in velvet. But they'll have the velvet rubbed off before too long. Hunting whitetails during the early season is different than in winter. This time of year, bucks don't seem to move much, but you can sit in the sand and simply wait them out. But I've had better success with spotting and stalking. Spotting and stalking whitetails is an extremely difficult thing to do, but if you're successful, there's nothing more rewarding. You know, one of the things that I found is that the best time of year to spot and stalk whitetails is early. And the reason why is because they've been laying up all summer long, they're fat, dumb, and happy, and they let their guard down. This is some beautiful looking alfalfa. You know, one of the reasons that the deer and the elk get so big up in this part of the country is because they have the proper nutrition. And this is one of the key ingredients right here is alfalfa. It's a real good stand of it, but the problem is in this particular field, there's no real good sign. And what I'm talking about is I don't see any droppings and I don't see a lot of tracks and none of the alfalfa is nipped off from deer coming down here. So, but this particular area is agricultural. What I'm gonna do is you'll notice there's lots of woodlots like this. And these woodlots are pretty common in the Midwest and Kansas, and Nebraska and Iowa and stuff. And this type of technique that I'm gonna be doing is pretty effective over there as well as just spotting and stalking. And, a lot of these alfalfa fields, they'll just, they're hotter than others. You'll find some deer that are working an alfalfa field better than others. So what I'm gonna be doing is working my way down through these wood lots and these little creek bottoms, looking for bedded up deer that'll wind up coming out here and feeding late in the evening, but then bedding up during the day and see if I can get close enough to get a shot. I mentioned earlier that there are certain alfalfa fields that get hit harder than others. And this is a good example. This is the first one we've really found that looks good. If you take a look out across here, you'll actually notice that you've got the alfalfa's pretty high out here in the open, but as it gets close to the point of the trees, it actually dips down. Those animals have been using this tree line here, and you can tell they're feeding here just because it's comfortable. There's all kinds of evidence that deer have been hitting this. If you take a look at the tops of this alfalfa, they're all hit. The tops have all been bit off. There's no cattle in here. The only thing doing that really is deer. So. There's lots of other sign out here, droppings and some tracks, so this is a good area. I just saw a couple of deer go to the right, down off that little hump. I just saw the tip of their antlers. I still don't know what bumped them. several nice bucks and something just bumped them and got them up out of their bend and it moved them around. They don't know that we're here, I don't think, but we don't have any wind at all, which really I'd rather have a little bit of wind. I don't know what happened to them. A little while later, I got caught in the wide open as I was making my way to a willow break. I'm 
getting pretty close. Persistence, persistence. I didn't see, I only saw one buck in there and there were three. I was shooting through a bunch of brush. It's the only shot I had. He busted off this way, the two went that way. I don't know if I hit him or not. I'm gonna go down and check my arrow. That is a hammerhead broadhead. It opens up to full two inches and there's no way that I'm gonna get that out of the tree, but that's pretty awesome that it opened up like that and you can actually see the cut. I mean, if I wind up, if I get lucky and can hit one, I'll be laying a big old hole in them. Here's something else I want to point out too. If I was using a, an aluminum shaft arrow, it'd be toast. That right there is a vapor made by Blackhawk. It's a carbon arrow and I can shoot it over and over again. Thank you. 
I got him in the heart. I got him in the heart. I saw blood just gushing out of him. Look at him. I see the blood spewing out of him there. Yeah, baby. Yeah. I drilled him right there in the willows. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's good. That's real good. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. That deer, what I've been doing, I've been working these bottoms, working these hollows. And I've been busting some deer out. I missed a deer. I wound up. I had another shot at one. I didn't take it. And that deer right there, I shot him, and he went up there, and I saw, as soon as I hit him, I saw blood just spew out of his side, and as it's backlit from the sun, I saw blood coming out. That deer's dead, but we're gonna give him about 10 minutes and go and get him. This has gotta be the exact same buck that was bedded in that alfalfa field. It is, I'm sure it is. It's got that same little kicker off his G2. Look at the size of his antlers. He is absolutely massive. Check that out. That little kicker right there, I'm sure this is the same buck. You know, I've hunted white-tailed deer all over from Mexico to Canada, but Canada's one of my favorite places. And the reason why is because they have such trophy potential up here. Look at the mass on this buck. The deer up here have the right genetics, but they also have the right nutrition. And anybody who watches the show knows I'm always a big advocate of providing the right nutrition, but God provides the right nutrition up here. It is uh, not poured out of a sack like we do down south. This right here is a result of proper nutrition, and it is an unbelievable trophy. I'm sure it's the same deer that we saw in that alfalfa field. Listen, with Chris Weitzer in Bear Valley Outfitters, you have the opportunity to come up here and hunt whitetails. Now, this is opening day of whitetail season in Saskatchewan, September the 1st. And you can come up here and you can hunt whitetails. He's also got an elk hunting operation. You can hunt them. Right now it's bear season, and if you want to, you can also hunt for a big old buffalo. Get a pencil and paper ready, give Chris a call, and if you don't get that phone number, if you don't have enough time to write it down, make sure and log on to our website. Check this bad boy out. We'd also like to thank the folks at Budget Car and Truck Rental in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan for providing us with transportation, and the Saskatoon Inn for providing our accommodations while in Saskatoon. Before we close out today's show, there is one thing I'd like to do. I'd like to dedicate the program to the United States military and all the folks that are serving in it. It's a tough job. I want you to know that we appreciate you on behalf of me, my family, and all of our staff. We sincerely appreciate all you're doing to keep America free. <laughs>